Erwin Schrödinger gave his world-famous Schrödinger equation, which shows that quantum particles act as wave function, and we can define the properties of quantum state particles in the terms of position operator and momentum operator. Particles exist in superposition state, and the moment anyone observes the quantum state, the wave function, that is the amalgamation of different properties to exist at certain time, collapses, and settle down for one value. Schrödinger proposed this, we now study it, but we cannot get hold of the fact of how things work at quantum level. Schrödinger himself was quite skeptical during his time in early 1940s, and he was trying to make sense of quantum mechanics through Eastern mysticism. Quantum mechanics is really a spider web, as even its founder gets entangled into it. Einstein never agreed with its founders, and always countered the principles of quantum mechanics through his practical analogies. He asked Niels Bohr, does the moon disappear when we are not looking at it? Is reality just an excellent set of probabilities? God doesn't play dice, to which Bohr replied, stop telling God what to do with his dice. The period of 1930s was really a grand decade, when two giants were colliding intellectually, Einstein and Bohr. So who was right? Let's try to understand it in this video. My name is Kyle and you're watching the world of science. Quantum mechanics basically says that quantum particles are represented by quantum wave, and each peak of the wave represents certain probability of the particle. Size of the wave is directly proportional to the probability of quantum particles, let's say electron at that point. Only when some observation happens, wave function collapses at a particular peak, and we get to know certain value of the electron's quantum state. Einstein questioned, doesn't it mean that electron was already present at the location of the peak? Bohr said that there is no meaning of position, unless it is measured. This was complete departure from the Newtonian view, which even Einstein couldn't accept so easily. He assembled a team of two other physicists Nathan Rosen and Boris Podolowski, and devised a method to measure the properties of particles, before an observer makes some observation. But according to his relativity theory, time is not absolute, so measurement of particles at any certain time differs according to motion and gravity. They proposed a method to measure the position and velocity of particles without even observing it. Suppose you take a particle and break it into two, or you can take a wave and let it pass it through a polarizer. Thus the wave will be divided into two parts, one left-handed and one right-handed, both moving at a certain angle, with respect to normal in opposite direction. If we measure the position and velocity of one wave, we can definitely predict the position and velocity of other wave, since they are interrelated. Thus for the second wave, measurement happened without any observation. So every particle must have a definite position and velocity at a definite time. They proposed that there are some information hidden in quantum mechanics, and quantum mechanics is indeed incomplete. By incorporating those hidden variables, extra information about the wave function can be known. But it's not that easy. Every time we measure one particle out of the two interrelated particles, something very weird happens. If we measure a spin-up state for one electron, automatically the other particle would show spin-down state. This measurement doesn't bind itself to distance and time, and can be measured throughout the length of the universe. It is like, one particle is sending some hidden signal to the other particle. Einstein called it, spooky action at a distance. Schrödinger wrote to Einstein in late 1930s and coined a new word for it, entanglement. The exchange of information between two particles is instantaneous, and if someone wants to measure the information of two particles, separated at a distance equal to diameter of universe, the transfer of information must be happening at speed greater than the speed of light. This process directly violates Einstein's special theory of relativity. 
This is a paradox famously known as EPR paradox, named after initials of each physicist. Quantum probability still holds here, because certainly one can predict the properties of second particles, but outcome of each particle states, upon observing one of the entangled particles is very random. Einstein's hidden variable theory was discarded in 1970s, and quantum entanglement remains one of the most mysterious phenomenon of the quantum mechanics. Quantum entanglement has been physically observed in various experiments performed throughout the labs across the world. In 1997, in the University of Geneva, entanglement has been observed up to a distance of 11 kilometers. In recent years, we have witnessed more advancements in the field of quantum entanglement. Two particles although separated through space and time, are always communicating and exchanging information, thus violating the current known laws of physics. It's true when they say that if you think you understand quantum physics, you are lying. Comment below your thoughts about quantum mechanics. Do check out other videos on our channel. Make sure you subscribe the world of science for more such interesting videos. Until next time, stay scientific.